Some neighbors in Camas woke up early Saturday morning to banging on their back door. Clark County Sheriff's deputies say it happened after a woman was kidnapped and carjacked. She escaped and then ran to nearby homes for help. K2's Eric Mock has been tracking the situation closely today. Eric, this carjacking and kidnapping started in Vancouver. Yeah, it actually started, police say, right near this intersection in Vancouver, Grand Boulevard, Mill Plain Boulevard. They said she had stopped to help this man, and she actually let him into her car. He then pulled out a knife, threatened her, took control of the car. Then they drove down over to Camas, and that's where they said the car slowed down, and she was able to escape, and she ran to some sleeping homeowners in that area, begging them to help her. So she came through the gate here. Jamie Woods is showing us how a woman who deputies say had been kidnapped came to their home for help. Deputies say after she was carjacked and kidnapped by a man with a knife in Vancouver Saturday, she jumped out of the car after it slowed down on Northeast 28th Street in Camas. She then ran to Woods' back door begging for help. She was on here like this and she was beating on the door like this and she was going like this, jiggling the door handle. But it was pitch black back here because I had the porch light off and I turned the porch light on and I was like, whoa, a lady's on my back porch. <laughs> this was at 4.30 in the morning and at first Woods was skeptical, but called 911 after hearing her story. That she was kidnapped and someone was trying to kill her and I was like, so then I started getting sympathetic and I'm like, oh, something's not right here. And Woods took this video of her as they waited for Clark County Sheriff's deputies to arrive. Thought he was gonna kill me. We're not showing her face because investigators are not identifying her. After deputies arrived, she was able to give them the description of her car. A short while later, deputies saw the car and tried to pull the suspect over. He led them on a chase which ended here at Northeast 2nd Street and Northeast 115th in Vancouver at about 5.30 a.m. Deputies say Vancouver PD helped them pin the car so he couldn't get away and then arrested him. Wood says he's just glad they were able to help this woman get away from a dangerous situation. Oh, I feel definitely good about it. You know, absolutely, you know, because I could have just been a jerk and pushed her out of my gate and shut it and went back to bed. So I'm just glad that she was safe, you know. Pretty scary. Yeah, and hate groups are climbing. A man has been arrested after assaulting several women near the waterfront. Police say Colin Jones was a biased crime. K2's Francis Lynn joins us live tonight. Fran, police say this all happened where you are in South Portland. Yes, police say this was where Jones attacked these women because of what he believes these women's sexual orientations are. He's currently being charged with bias crime and assault. On Friday, September 2nd, police say they responded to a report of an assault. Police told K2 the suspect, 24-year-old Colin Jones, verbally attacked several women for their perceived sexual orientation. He also tried to punch two women and succeeded with one knocking her to the ground. Police were eventually able to find and arrest him thanks to a picture one of the victims had taken. K2 talked to people around the area about what happened. A local biker says things have taken a turn since the pandemic. It just seems like there's a lot of lawlessness and it feels much less safe than it did three years ago. A runner says he sees violence everywhere. It's so dangerous. It's everywhere. Um, no area of the city is untouched by the the problem. A grandfather says he's worried about where to bring his grandkids now. This is a fun place. This is a, a place where we should be able to walk and talk and have our grandkids run around. We used to bring them to the fountains and we, we're not doing that anymore, and that's really discouraging. So, uh, yeah, I'm concerned about it. And when they heard it's possibly a bias crime. The act of violence against anybody is bad, but when you're singling groups out, that's even worse. That's just shouldn't be tolerated. It used to be that the predators would go to the, the local playground. Well, now they're going to the local online gaming platforms, and then they'll go into these, these, these popular game spaces and meet other kids on there. Keeping kids safe online may seem like an easy task, but with ever-evolving apps and gaming sites, it's easier said than done. I asked Robert Hammer with Homeland Security Investigations what they're seeing. 
Are there new ways or other ways that predators are finding kids online? Is this something that you know, you're looking out for? Uh, we see things from inno innocuous apps all the way to, to things that uh, online gaming platforms. You know, you think you're, you're playing Minecraft and it's a, it's a harmless game, but yet there's a chat function available to it. And then uh, the predators know this and they take advantage of these little um, insertion points. Hammer recommends parents have protections in place. He says adding phone restrictions, switching social media profiles to private, and removing devices from the room at night are just several safeguards. Educating them before they hit uh, approve or add a friend or anything like that, make sure they understand that predators are out there creating fake profiles to look like friends, to look like young people in high schools, but yet they're, they're, they're much older individuals that um, are designed to trick kids into adding them into their social networks. The predator grooming process often starts with building trust, eventually asking for photos and personal information. Kids can then get locked into sextortion, and it's more common than you'd think. Every law enforcement agency in this country could do nothing but child exploitation leads, and we would still have more leads than we know what to do with. Uh, it's a sad reality that by the thousands, there are leads coming out from various uh, providers. Hammer says it can be difficult to rescue kids from these situations when they're already in them. So having open conversations keeps your kids informed and safe when online.